Hey everyone, Paul here. How's it going? In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create the image on screen. Uh, this is a tune shaded image uh, without using a single tune shader. This image was created purely using uh, basic uh, shaders that are found inside of Blender, Cycles, and the Compositor. Uh, this is a direct follow-on from the tutorial um, on freestyle from last month where we created this image and I took you through some of the uh, freestyle settings. So if you have that file, you can take this as your working file, as the, the, the starting point, and if you follow along uh, in either 2.79 or 2.80, uh, we should arrive at something resembling this image here. Uh, so without any further ado, why don't we get stuck in? I told one tiny little white line that intro. Okay, this isn't exactly the file that we ended up with. I have actually created some materials for these objects. If I went into 3D viewport and went into look development mode, you can actually see that these are shaded. Uh, I did this for the sake of uh, speeding up uh, the demo. There will be a link to the free Patreon post where you can download this working file and everything will be shaded as is shown in this image. Now these materials, okay, if I was to take a look at some of these materials here, let's say gray steel, you can see that it's simply a diffuse material. There's nothing special about it. It's just got this color. Uh, the orange material, again, just a diffuse with this color. Um, where have we got something special? Okay, I've got a hazard texture. There's just a wave texture and a geometry node uh, via a mapping node and a color ramp that creates this hazard line texture. Again, it's just going through a diffuse material and that's in this scene as well. Uh, there's a few other things. There's some emission materials as well as a polished material, which is just a simple glossy shader with a color on it. And this has been applied to these bars over here. I've created these materials because I'm going to take you through the process of breaking down a composite but in order to break down the composite, what we need to do first is uh, create an environment where we can um, extrapolate some passes from a color render. Now, the demo file begins with just a single view layer pass, and in it, we've got our line work. And as you can see here, if I was just to go to my image editor, uh, that is indeed what I rendered, okay? And uh, again, it is composited over a single mix node so that we've got these lines over white. And everything here is working as we'd set it up in the previous tutorial. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a second layer and I'm gonna call this color. So over here, uh, I'm gonna go uh, add view layer, gonna call it color, and I'm going to set this up for rendering. So what do we need to do? Well, first off, I highly recommend you change your render engine to cycles if it hasn't already been set two cycles. Uh, this is because in cycles we can separate out freestyle from all the other passes as a separate thing and comp it back in. Um, and plus I want to use the cycles feature set uh, in, in your light paths and, um, and, and filters uh, to uh, separate out certain passes that you don't quite get an Eevee just yet. So with that I'm going to go down to sam sampling. Now it's okay to set it at very low if all you have is a diffuse and an emission shader, but we've got some glossiness. So I'm gonna bump this up to 32. Similarly, under light paths, I'm going to also bump this up and I'm gonna make sure my glossy is set quite high, but I'm gonna leave everything else um, as it was before. Now in cycles, we still need freestyle enabled, even though we're not going to do a freestyle uh, pass on the color layer. So uh, we're going to leave everything else as is and we're going to go to the view layer tab. Um, but here what we can actually do is um, delete any freestyle line set or any freestyle line style and under filter we can untick freestyle, we can untick hair, ambient occlusion, uh, even environment in this case, because we don't actually need an environment pass. So all that we have is surfaces. That's the only thing we need to render in this pass. Under passes, we can leave everything as is. And under light, here's um, sort of where the magic happens, so to speak. What we need to do is we need to tell cycles, okay, I need to deliver a diffuse color pass. 
This is going to um, allow us, uh, after render, to separate out just the colors that are in diffuse shaders. Similarly, we will need a glossy color pass, but we're going to enable two more things under glossy. We're going to enable the indirect and direct under glossy, and I'm doing this purely to illustrate what we get in these three separate passes uh, under your light uh, passes uh, tab. I'm going to enable two more things. We need an emission pass and we need a shadow pass. Now I'm just going to go to the free 3D viewport to show you what is actually going to generate the shadow pass and that is this sun lamp over here which is shining into the scene and if we were to look through our camera and if we were to enable, uh, I mean, uh, looks, uh, look Deb's, uh, how do you pronounce this? Look Dev uh, display shader uh, mode. Uh, and under shading, I'm going to enable scene lights. You can do a couple of other things in look uh, shading. Say for instance, we wanted to see reflections from a certain map. Right now it defaults to this weird sort of uh, outdoor tree thing. And so if we were to look carefully at these reflective objects, you can actually see that they are reflecting these really cool trees, okay, um, on your reflection map, which is not very realistic to look at. And if you wanted to sort of do something a little bit uh, different, maybe you want to select something like uh, this indoor setting or um, maybe this setting for an indoor lit uh, scene or something like that. Um, it's not going to reflect what's in the scene. In instead, it's going to do what's known as an environment map uh, just for the purposes of testing out a reflective surface in look development. Now I use look development because the um, rendered setting is going to take a while to actually render inside the viewport and we're going to see all the grainy artifacting uh, unless we bump up uh, that render really high so that we get a more accurate uh, representation and that is not necessary for our purposes and this is just going to waste a lot of time uh, just to try to see what it might look like in the end. So I much rather use the look development so that I can check the texture mapping, the texture colors, where the shadows uh, sort of lie and get a good indication of where everything important needs to be. And I can do that on the fly. So as you, as you see, I can uh, rotate around this scene and everything looks great or I can just look through the camera and everything looks um, as I need it to, um, to check. So now that we've got those passes, uh, because we've got a glossiness, we may want to actually uh, enable denoising. And I'm gonna bump up this radius and I'm gonna bump up the strength and the feature strength, but I'm only going to enable denoising for glossy, okay? Uh, I don't really need anything else denoised. Be judicious when using this or bumping up your sample rates to get a tune shaded look. Um, it all depends on the materials that you're using. So now what we'll do is we will bring in Shift A and input render layer and we will set this to color. And if we take a look at this render layer, you will already see that everything that we enabled over here uh, under our passes is reflected as an output uh, in our render layer. So why don't we go ahead and do a render on this. It'll just take a few minutes and I'll cut right back. All right, so we're back. Now this render took about four minutes, 40 seconds on my computer, which is a lot longer than when rendering just straight out diffuse or textures or that sort of thing. There's a few things to bear in mind. Now. I've only lit this with one single sun lamp. Using other types of lamps, you're gonna get various softness and you're going to have to bump up the sample rate to get faithful shadows. Already, uh, if we take a look at the samples here, I've only given this sampling of about 32. So it isn't high and that's why we can actually see all of this grain around the diffuse uh, stuff and even in the glossiness, which we'll see in a moment, there's a slight grain, but it's not as um, intense because we've actually denoised. Now, the things that will um, give you a, a longer renders is obviously bigger samples. Also, denoising, even though this is a way to sort of cheat a little bit and blur out any fireflies or get rid of any of that sort of um, uh, artifacting, it still adds a, a bit of operation to, to the render. And so, 
you have to be judicious again. But let's take a look at our render passes. I've selected the color layer from the drop down menu, not the composite, and I'm going to take a click on where it says combined. Now, what I can see are things like the noisy image. This is the stuff that was denoised without the denoising. That could come in handy if you just wanted to sort of check it out. Uh, the combined, obviously, we've seen this. This is all the passes mashed together uh, in a complete one pass render. Now, we've got things like uh, diff cull. This is the straight color information with no shading whatsoever. You notice the black areas, okay? This is where there's an emission material or a glossy material. This is only the diffuse color information. If we wanted to take a look at the glossy color, here are all the glossy objects, and you can see that everything else creates somewhat of a mask around it. We have a shadow pass, and this is why I like to use sun lamps. They're harsh, they're uh, clean lines, and they create these really stark contrasty images, okay, uh, which can be used for compositing in a number of ways, especially with line work, okay. We have an emission pass. This is all the surfaces that have some sort of emission material, and we can separate out all of that. There are two more passes that I wanna look at. Remember how we enabled glossy direct and ind indirect. Well, let's take a look at the glossy direct, okay? Here, we've got some quite sharp glossy um, highlights on the parts of the glossy materials that are the most reflective in relation to the light. And the glossy indirect um, is basically our reflection. You can see that there is still a bit of grain. We would really have to bump those samples up something quite high to get rid of that and uh, maybe the radius of the denoising a lot more. But this is going to do okay for our purposes, okay? So this is, for this demo, it's okay. And, and when you get to compositing, you're going to figure out that a little bit of grain like this is forgivable because it doesn't ruin the overall effect. And uh, we're gonna to get to that in just a moment. So let's go ahead and go and see what our compositing uh, total is. And obviously we've got our freestyle line pass, which I'm just gonna bring down here. And we're going to begin by compositing a few of these outputs from our render layer pass. So we start by going Shift A and bringing in our first mix node. And the things we are going to mix are our diff cull and our gloss cull. That is our diffuse color information and our glossy color information. The best way to mix that is using the add operation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to connect the diff color to the first input and the glossy color to the second input. We can see that our operation is add and let's have a look at and see what our final output is. You can see that indeed what we've done is added in our glossy information over our diffuse information. What do we want to do next? Well, we don't want to add the emission just yet, but just for the case in point, I'm just going to duplicate this and I'm going to add in our emission information. And there you can see our combined color pass for all the color if we so wish to do that, but we don't want that. What we want instead is to set this a multiply and bring in our shadow information. So I'm going to connect the shadow output into the input of this multiply node over here. And all of a sudden you can see that our dark shadows are indeed being mapped over everything. But what we want is to bring this back a little bit. And so what we're going to do is bring back that factor maybe by about 0.8. So we get a little bit of that a nice color showing through. And now what we can do is we can comp in our line work pretty much as the next pass in the chain. So let's bring in our mix node over here. Let's connect in our output from that image, bring it in here and see what happens when we mix in our uh, line work information. Now we see our lines. Uh, we can set this to something say like multiply and just bring that back to maybe a 0.8. And so it's faded out ever so slightly. And if you're happy with that flat shading, then your tune shading days are done and you can go ahead and render this background out. But I like to add in a few effects and that's where my emission pass um, and some compositing effects come in really handy. So let's go ahead and add in another node, Shift A, Color, Mix. 
and set this to add. Uh, bring in our emission on the second operation and our total on the first operation. So we go total image, emission, and let's see what that final output is. There's our emission over everything. Now, why did I put this over the lines? Here's why. I like to add a glow effect on my emissions, and this is a post filter that is available in the compositor. So I'm gonna go Shift A, Filter, Glare. I'm gonna put this on this line over here, and I'm gonna set this to Fog Glow. Now let's take a look at this Fog Glow effect, and let's play around with our settings here. Uh, I'm gonna drop my threshold to zero. What this means is that everything above, say, a black, uh, will be glowed or blown out, okay? And our size maxes out at around nine, so you can already see that that glow is being affected, um, sorry, is affecting the emission pass over the line work. Now, if I was to reverse this, I'll just quickly um, set this back in the queue. Let's go image, emission, and then let's bring that into the line work, and let's put the lines over the top. What we get is line work over our lovely glow effect, and that's not a great look. So that's why I prefer, I much prefer, having the line work put in just after your basic colors, and then comping any effects as an end stage. And you'll find this in a lot of comics, that these post effects are done over the inks. So um, I, I generally like to go colors, inking lines over the top, and then effects over the top of that. Now, what about our reflections? Okay, we took that time to get an extra render and we're not, we haven't used those reflections yet. So why don't we bump, put those reflections in before this glare effect, okay? And maybe even before the line effect. So let's duplicate this add node, but let's put it in before the shadows. Shift D and there it sits in there. And I'm going to begin with the Glossy Direct. If you recall, the Glossy Direct is this really sharp, shiny um, lighting uh, that, that um, appears, uh, that, that sort of interact, interacts directly with the, the lamp. So Glossy Direct goes in there. And now we've got that Glossy Direct added over the top. I generally stop at just having the direct glossy pass and then I don't bother with the denoising and I can reduce the sample rate a little bit. But I do want to play around with that reflection uh, material as well. And so I'm going to put this in front of, of that. So let's just duplicate that add again and let's bring in our glossy indirect to add a, a bit of that reflective information. And there it is. You can sort of see a few of those reflections and it just adds that little bit of pizzazz, that little bit of realism to an illustration that you see sometimes in, um, in comics now. So you've got a few of these materials reflecting on there, which is quite nice, um, and over here. And so what we've gone ahead and done is used that glossy information to greatest effect um, for this illustrative look. So it's starting to look a little bit messy, but there's one last thing I wanna do to this image before I, I call it a day, and that is add a nice uh, bit of sunbeam effect. Now, if we go back to our completed render, you will see that there are these wonderful beams coming down uh, from the ceiling, but uh, nowhere else. And I did not achieve this by some clever lighting method with a spot lamp and some halos and all that sort of stuff. No, you can achieve this using a couple of post filters in the compositor, and you can play around and update them pretty much on the fly. So why don't we go ahead and do that now. So what do we need uh, in order to produce this? Well, first off, we need our emission layer. But you'll notice that there's a lot of emission information. There's stuff on the sides, there's stuff on the ceiling, there's stuff even on the floor. And what we want is just say this area up here to cast these beams. What we need is a mask. So um, luckily, uh, the Blender Compositor has a few mask features that we can use. So why don't we go ahead and add one of those. Let's go Shift A, Matte, and I am going to use the Ellipse Mask. Unfortunately, you're kind of tied to Box Mask 
or a lips mask um, uh, for this. Uh, there isn't a masking channel where you can sort of draw an object. You sort of have to do a different type of post process and have some objects in your scene and blah, blah, blah. Um, and I'm not gonna go through that. I just wanna work on the post effects. But for our purposes, this is gonna work just fine. So I'm gonna create this ellipse mask. There it is, you can see uh, where it appears, right smack bang in the center. And we wanna position this. So we have to use our ellipse mask um, parameters to do this. Now, first off, I'm gonna drop the value ever so slightly so we can see a, a little bit behind the mask uh, so that we know what we're masking out. And uh, I'm going to, let's say, uh, we're gonna bring that Y uh, factor right up and we're gonna bring this X factor over. We're going to make this a lot wider and a little bit bigger until we get something like this, which allows us to mask all of this foreground stuff. Now I'm going to bump that value way up to one and I'm gonna change my mask type to multiply. And now all of a sudden you can see that just that area is cut out. And so now we can add our sunbeams filter. So let's uh, go ahead and go Shift A again, filter, sunbeams. And we're gonna put our sunbeams in here. Now, nothing seems to happen. That's because our sunbeams filter relies on a couple of things. A pivot point, or a sorry, a, a point of radiation, and right now it's set smack bang in the middle, 0.5.5, and a ray length. Let's bring in a ray length of 0.6, and all of a sudden you can see how this is beginning to work. We've got this area in the middle which is sort of blackish and all of our rays are going that way, which we don't want. We want them to come down. And so what we will do is we will change our Y factor to something outside the range. So now we've got these beams uh, looking down and maybe we might bring our X factor ever so slightly across so that they're uh, they're a little bit asymmetrical. And now we've got this sunbeam information. Maybe we'll bump this up a little bit higher. And now we can bring this information over our combined uh, image. So let's, out, let's see, there's our combined image. Um, there it is. I'm going to duplicate this add um, filter and I'm gonna add our sunbeams into that. And there we have it. Okay, we've got these sunbeams showing through, and of course, because of these color mix nodes, we can change that factor of any of these. So I can drop that maybe back to a 0.8, or even lighter if I want to, or make it just really, really subtle. Um, and there we have it, we've got this completed render, which is looking really nice. We've got some glows, we've got some even some reflection in material, and we have some halo effects coming down from these lights. And all we used to achieve it was the compositor with just some clever compositing tricks that you can do on the fly once you've produced your render. You can download this completed uh, file as well as the working file with all the materials attached to it and you can follow along. Um, and all of these are available through the link to my free Patreon post. Uh, so I hope you got a lot out of that. Um, hit me up in the comments uh, if you have any more further questions. Uh, but thanks for watching guys, bye for now.